take up RAAS in detail which is a mechanism to conserve water. So this is the third one RAAS. The full form is Renin Angiotensinogen which is actually going to change into angiotensin aldosterone system and in the previous segment we saw that this renin is released from the juxtaglomerular cells of juxtaglomerular apparatus. Now the situation when this system works is when the body fluid volume is less. So there is decrease volume of body fluid. Because of less body fluid volume, there would be decrease in the blood pressure. So lower renal blood pressure. And this renal blood pressure when we are talking of, we are specially talking of in afferent arteriole. In afferent arteriole. This lower blood pressure is detected by the juxtaglomerular cells. Detected by juxta glomerular cells and they release renin and they release renin. Renin is that enzyme that we are talking of. Releases renin. These cells they release renin. Renin is an enzyme which with rather 340 amino acids. This renin is required for conversion of, so we are continuing from here, renin is required for conversion of angiotensinogen, angiotensinogen to angiotensin 1. Angiotensinogen is a plasma protein synthesized by liver. So it is present in blood plasma but it is produced by liver. This plasma protein angiotensinogen is converted into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is a decapeptide and it also acts as a vasoconstrictor. This angiotensin 1 is converted into angio Tensin 2. Angiotensin 2 is an octapeptide. And angiotensin 2 stimulates this stimulates adrenal adrenal cortex to stimulate sorry, to secrete aldosterone, to secrete aldosterone. This aldosterone which is produced or secreted by adrenal cortex is responsible for increased absorption of ions. So this Aldosterone helps in increasing the absorption, increases absorption of 
sodium ions from nephric filtrate nephric filtrate now if more and more ions are absorbed from nephric filtrate that means the filtrate is going to become less concentrated you're removing the solute from here in other words we can say that nephric filtrate is becoming hypotonic and water moves from hypo to hyper that means water will move from the filtrate out into the blood so the next thing is because of this ion absorption water reabsorption from collecting that increases and if water is absorption is increased that means this water goes into the blood and less water is being thrown out of the body that means the urine will get hypertonic so this would result in formation of hypertonic urine so the system is working whenever there is decrease in the volume of body fluid as soon as volume decreases and as we have seen there are certain reasons which can result into this condition there can be excessive bleeding due to some kind of surgery or accident there can be profuse sweating due to some kind of physical exercise or if sometimes water intake is less in that situation the volume of body fluid that is blood will be decreased if that decreases the blood pressure also falls especially the renal blood pressure renal blood pressure our main emphasis is on the blood pressure in the afferent arteriole this decreased pressure is detected by the juxtaglomerular cells which are found in the tunica media of the afferent arteriole they store renin so as soon as they are stimulated they release the enzyme renin this renin helps in the conversion of a plasma protein angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1 it is a peptide a deca peptide plus it also acts as a vasoconstrictor so it constricts those blood vessels so that less and less blood goes there angiotensin 1 gets converted into angiotensin 2 this angiotensin 2 stimulates adrenal cortex to secrete aldosterone function of aldosterone is to increase absorption of sodium ions from the filtrate if you are able to recall that this was the cortex part and here is medulla so and this is the collecting duct so if you are talking of this collecting duct what is aldosterone doing this is the filtrate aldosterone is responsible for absorption of sodium ions if sodium ions are taken out then this filtrate becomes hypotonic and water is going to move from hypo to hyper that is in the medulla region where the blood vessels are there so this water actually comes into the blood less and less water would go out of the body and here it will produce hypertonic urine so this is how this renin angiotensinogen aldosterone system works this is a complicated system in the sense there are multiple things coming from various places are involved renin which comes from juxta glomerular cells angiotensinogen is a plasma protein which is synthesized by liver aldosterone comes from adrenal cortex so one thing stimulates the formation or release of the other the second one stimulates the third and so on and finally the purpose is achieved that is more and more water gets absorbed and the urine which is eliminated is more concentrated and that is hypertonic so kidneys help in osmoregulation in both the situations situation 1 if intake of water is plenty if more water more than required water is taken then that extra water has to be eliminated in that case 
the urine is going to be dilute or hypotonic. In this situation, when blood volume has decreased because of some losses, then more and more water should be conserved, less should be eliminated. So the urine is more concentrated or hypertonic. One more thing which is there which is responsible for maintaining or helping in osmoregulation is ANF. We'll take that up next. The next substance which help in osmoregulation is ANF. So we are seeing the role of ANF, role of ANF in osmoregulation. Full form of ANF is atrial natriuretic factor. It is released from the walls of auricles of heart from the atrial wall that is auricular wall of heart and it acts antagonistically to RAAS. Its action, action of ANF is antagonistic to RAAS that is sorry RAAS that is, it acts just reverse to renin, angiotensin, aldosterone system. RAAS works when the blood volume decreases. ANF is released whenever there is increase in blood volume. Blood volume increases, there is increased ANF. That is, increased secretion of atrial natriuretic factor. Whenever this is released, what is it going to do? It decreases secretion of renin from juxtaglomerular cells. And if less renin is released, then all other steps would be stopped. That means angiotensinogen will not change into angiotensin 1 angiotensin 2 will not be formed, adrenal cortex would not be stimulated and aldosterone release or secretion would be less or will not take place. If there is no aldosterone, no sodium ions absorbed. If ions are not absorbed, the water will also not be absorbed. So in this case, the urine output is going to be hypotonic. So this results in secretion of hypotonic urine. And that is why we say that it acts antagonistically or it is antagonistic to RAAS. So basically there are three substances that is ADH, antidiuretic hormone, ANF and third is a system which is made up of various substances like renin and geotensin and so on. So RAAS. These are the three main things which are responsible for tubular reabsorption. Responsible for tubular reabsorption of water. And that is helping in maintaining osmolarity. Now, if we talk about the functions of kidney, there are two main functions which are done. One, elimination of nitrogenous waste which is the prime function of kidneys. The second is osmoregulation. So when we say it eliminates all the waste, it eliminates drugs, extra vitamins, all those things are eliminated by kidneys. It helps in maintaining water and iron balance in our body. And there is one more function which is done by the kidneys functions of kidneys. So the first one which we talk of is removal of nitrogenous waste. This is the most important one. Then 
osmoregulation. We have discussed these functions in detail. The third function is kidneys secrete a hormone called erythropoietin. Erythropoietin is secreted by kidneys. And this hormone is responsible for formation of RBC. RBC formation. So RBC formation takes place in erythropoietic tissue but erythropoietin is required for this RBC production. So this is also one function of kidney. So three roles or uh, functions done. Removal of waste, <coughs> then osmoregulation, maintenance of iron, water balance in the body, which maintains homeostasis, and production of erythropoietin, which is required for RBC production. So this is what is uh, osmoregulation in different different conditions when excess water comes in or less water comes in. And kidneys play a very significant and important role in maintaining that balance and homeostasis in our body. Now in the next part, we will be talking about certain disorders related with excretory system and the role which is played by other organs in excretion.